recorded a version of rock and roll music, a song written by Chuck Berry and also played by the Beatles. And I did it in the Beatles key, and one of the advantages of doing like that was that then you could go and learn to play my version of it while listening to John Lennon singing. Um, but it's not the easiest key to play it in. What happened in it was you started with me seven, then the first melody notes right up here, and you're accompanying it, the melody, with a chorus. is quite difficult if you're playing in a tenor and also when you get to this one for instance playing across on this new yoke of mine that's not too bad because the fretboard is slightly wider than on my Carvalho uh, but it isn't easy and um, I don't want to make everything I play difficult or look difficult um, besides which there's what's going on in the left hand could be simplified if I change keys, whereas the right hand is still doing the same thing. So you could use this tutorial really to look at what the right hand can do, um, as well as thinking about the left hand a little bit. Okay, when Chuck Berry did it, he actually did it in E flat, and you'd be sort of around on this chord if you were doing it in that key on the uke. Um, but we often like to make use of open strings on the ukulele, and the key that does it most successfully I thought was doing it down in D. A C would be a possibility but uh, it's not quite as uh, flexible for this to get this 7C in the right place. So I'm going to start with an A7 chord, one of the simplest chords you can possibly play on the uke, and my strum, just to explain this, being a plectrum guitarist for years, holding a pick then these two fingers are going down up. What I did when I started working on the ukulele was to throw away the pick but still use that kind of shape but then open the fingers up so you're going down with the first finger nail up with the thumbnail and it's a bedrock of really the things I do and the two fundamental processes that I think I've acquired in doing this finger style playing. One is that strum and things that come from it, but, but also this Pima stroke where you're holding your sort of default position is to have thumb, first finger, second finger, third finger, one finger for each string. It seems so logical to me, uh, which is why I don't really go for the finger picking styles, which some people do really brilliantly, but it just didn't grab me the way it does others. Okay, so in this I'm going to start with this one. Then the first melody note is that C, and you're doing that with an MI stroke. Then you're into basically that shape for a D7, except because you want to maneuver the melody note around, I'm going to play it like this, with these two playing a D. Probably. Now what the right hand is doing is that. Okay. And the variations of it that come in the tune. Um, then when you change to a G7, that's your stem position. Then you're back to the D7-1. Then the e A7, but then with the uh, melody I know, the C natural, hitting against the C sharp in there, in the bass. Um, strum a whole chord with it, but you're going to repeat it, the next time you do it you're going to add some chords, okay 
So that's the basic idea of the first part. Now sometimes as I play, I don't adhere totally to this. I want to do strokes like this to play. Especially when you get long, you've got a long melody note and nothing much is happening in the rhythm. So you can um, put some rascuados or just strum strokes in. So let's just see what happens if I go from the beginning again and see how I play. variations and as you're playing I get bored if I do the same thing over and over again so I will change and that's quite a nice way of doing it when you're not using the finger um, both actually play the same notes uh, but using a different finger okay so that's the basic idea of the first part of the tune which is a straightforward blues now I had a middle eight section where it stopped being a blues and the nice thing about this the tune is quite simple So for those eight bars, what he did uh, was to give a, well, he's talking about various reasons why rock and roll is best, the best thing, it's sliced bread, crepes or whatever, um, and he mentions, uh, don't, if you're playing modern jazz for instance, you can go too darn fast, you lose the beauty of the melody, um, sort of talking about the way that people like Cornette Coleman bebop players, Dizzy Gillespie. Um, and then another verse is talking about um, Latin American beats. And I got the feeling for the um, middle section, the accompaniment part behind the melody I play, um, of doing the clave rhythm from um, sambas and things like that, where you're dividing the eight beats, eight half beats, into well, quavers, as we call them in England instead of going one and two and three and four and four, one and two and three and four. You're actually dividing them into groups of, instead of groups of two, or two groups of four, you're dividing into group of three, another group of three, and then a group of two. So you're getting one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. And try and put that rhythm behind the melody. So you get this. roughly the idea but again if you do the whole verse the whole number of verses which I think is five for the whole song you can change it around So, when you um, send to me further music and tabs of this, as I hope you will, look at what is written and remember that it isn't written in stone and the fingerings aren't put there so you can experiment with them. And especially with what you're going to do with the right hand. Um, when I started arranging for ukulele, I was sort of fixated with the idea of playing everything in chords, but I've moved quite a long way since then, and one of the first things I did was the locomotion, where you can move the melody note, 
starting with the C. So. Like that. And just strum it. And in the part I was doing there of... The note is there, but it's embedded within it. Yes. Um, but I could spend pages after page after page showing all the different variations for the different verses of this. But this is the area where I really think you should um, start creating for yourself and making it your own arrangement rather than try and copy mine. But from me, you will at least get the right shapes to play the song in. So, hope you've enjoyed this and do some rock and roll music in peace.